The latest Fox News poll shows former President Donald Trump more than 30 points ahead in the Republican primary against his nearest rival, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. The poll also has some interesting thoughts from GOP voters about electability. Here's who they say they would never vote for, with Mike Pence leading at 35 percent. And the top two polling candidates, Trump and DeSantis, getting at least 13 percent. And for Republican voters, winning in 2024 is the priority. 70 percent say it's extremely important to support a candidate who can beat Biden, while 55 percent say the same about sharing a candidate's views on issues. Joining us now is someone who says he is the most electable Republican presidential candidate, Larry Elder. Uh, Larry, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, why are you the guy? Why should why should Republican voters rally behind Larry Elder? Because you would be the most viable in beating Joe Biden, whoever the Democrats put up on the ticket. Well, Jason, thank you for having me. Uh, they should rally behind me because I've been talking about conservative issues for 40 years. I have a syndicated column. I've been writing articles about this, 1,200 articles altogether, half a dozen books altogether, 30,000 hours of radio over the last 30 years. You can trust me. I'm an America first guy, make America great again guy, but I also bring to the table, Jason, three or four issues that our side does not talk enough about, if at all. And if I just take a minute, number one is, why are we talking about the epidemic of fatherlessness? 70% of black kids today enter the world without a father in the home married to the mother, up threefold from 1965 when Democrat Lynn and Johnson launched a so-called war on poverty. And the stats are grim. If you're raised without a father, you're five times more likely to be poor and commit crime, nine times more likely to drop out of school, 20 times more likely to end up in jail. What we've done is incentivize women to marry the government and incentivize men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. And I've got ideas about that. The second thing is this lie the Democrats have always pushed, which is that America in 2023 remains systemically racist. It's not just a lie that's pushing things like CRT uh, and critical race theory uh, and reparations and diversity, equity, uh, inclusion. It's also getting people killed. How? It's called the George Floyd effect or the Ferguson effect. And that's a phenomenon of cops pulling back all over the country for fear of being called systemically racist. And there are thousands of people who've been victimized by violent criminals or who are dead who otherwise wouldn't be dead, but for the police not doing their normal proactive policing. Then we've got a crisis, a crisis Jason, in urban education in America. You've got 13 public high schools, I kid you not, uh, in Baltimore, where 0% of the kids can do math at grade level. 53 government schools in Chicago, 0% of the kids can do math at grade level. And we're spending more money than ever. And 85% nationwide, according to the National Report Card, 85% of black kids, 13 years old, eighth graders, can neither read nor do math at grade level. Half can't even do basic reading, which means a substantial percentage of black 13-year-olds yeah. are functionally illiterate. Finally, we've got to get rid of these soft on crime George Soros DAs that have been elected all over the country in places like Baltimore, New York, Chicago, even Des Moines, L.A., San Francisco, who are letting bad guys out or who are not charging bad guys to the fullest extent of the law. And the people primarily are hurt by this are the very black and brown people that people on the left purport to care about. I think you bring up a great point about fatherless homes. Um, it, that is such a big factor and one of the major democratic uh, demographic uh, drifts that has happened over the last uh, several decades. But you call yourself a made in, uh, you know, make America great kind of guy. Um, Donald Trump at this point, at least polling wise, is lapping people. So uh, what's the strategy? How can you even come close to taking on Donald Trump, let alone getting more votes than he would? I'm not taking on Donald Trump, Jason. I'm taking on Biden-Harris. As you pointed out in that poll, the number one objective is to make sure we win in November 2024. And if Donald Trump is the nominee, I will campaign for him and with him, as I've done in the past, and will do so if asked to do so again. I'll do everything I can to make sure whoever it is we nominate beats Biden-Harris. Again, but I'm a Make America Great Again candidate, too, America First candidate, too. Plus, I bring the issues to bear that I just now mentioned. And I'm urging people to go to my website, LarryElder.com, and throw something in the tip jar. Uh, get me up there on that debate stage. I need 40,000 individual donations in order to make that. At the very least, even if you want another candidate, if I put these issues front and center, Jason, I will feel I've done a service to my party and, more importantly, a service for my country. Now, you have an interesting take here also, Larry, that you believe that if Joe Biden isn't on the ticket, 
that Gavin Newsom want, wouldn't make it. What, what, what's your thought on this? No, if uh, if Joe Biden can't fog up a mirror, the, the nominee is going to be Kamala Harris. She was chosen there because of the de Democrats' obsession with identity politics. She's a black, she's a female. Uh, and by the way, the black media loves Kamala Harris. Her polls are at least 70 percent among blacks, and I suspect even higher among black females. And don't forget, the first primary for the Democrats is South Carolina, where 60 percent of the voters are black, and most of those are black female. And they love Kamala Harris and will very much resent it if she is perceived as having been kicked to the curb for a white person like Mayor Pete or Gavin Newsom. So they are stuck with Kamala Harris. Uh, I, I think this is one of the fundamental problems that the Democrats have moving forward is they've got right. two people that are highly un, un, unlikable moving forward. So, again, Larry, your strategy, because, again, you've got to get 40,000 donations, 20, uh, I think 200 donations from 20 different states. That's right. But how would you differentiate yourself from Donald Trump and how do you di differentiate yourself from Governor Ron DeSantis? Those are the two leaders at this point. Again, I'm not running against Trump or Ron DeSantis. I'm running for president of the United States. I'm asking people to look at my track record, look at the 40 years I've been talking about these issues, debating them on radio, writing about them in columns, writing about them in, in, in my books, and the issues that I bring into the table that the others are not. Again, the epidemic of fatherlessness, the lie about America being systemically racist, the vital need for school choice, and the need to get rid of these George Soros uh, DAs. Let the voters decide. Well, look, I, uh, from my perspective, you have been a strong conservative for a long period of time, and your voice is an important one. I appreciate you joining us here on Sunday Morning Futures and wish all the best to you. Republican my pleasure. Thank presidential you very much. candidate Larry Elder, thank you very much.